Let's solve problem number 8 on recurrences using substitution. Here is the problem. Let Tn be defined by T1 equal to 10 and Tn plus 1 is equal to 2n plus Tn for all integers n greater than or equal to 1. Which of the following represents the order of growth of Tn as a function of n? Is it option A, big O of n? Is it B, pick O of n log n? Is it option C, theta of n square? Or is it option D, theta of n cube? This question has been asked in ISRO 2011. In this question, we have been told to find the order of growth of Tn as a function of n. So, Tn is clearly the function of n. This means the input is n. And we now need to find the order of growth. And this means we need to find the growth rate of Tn. And that too in terms of big O or big theta, that depends on what we get as the result. In the question, we are given with T1 equal to 10. This means for n equal to 1, T1 is 10. This is the base case. This is the base case because in the right hand side, we do not have the function T. So, it is clearly the base case or the easiest case to solve. Now, what about the recursive case? This is the recursive case. We can observe in the right hand side, we have the function T. In the left hand side, we have T of n plus 1 and this is equal to 2n plus Tn. And these two are satisfied for all integers n greater than or equal to 1. This means all positive integers. Now, we need to find the growth rate of Tn. And for this, we can use the substitution method. So now, let's apply the substitution method to find Tn in terms of big O or big theta. For this, we will remove this part of the problem. And now, we have the space for the solution to solve this problem. Let's find out what is Tn. First, we are available with T1 equal to 10. Let's write it as it is. This is the base case. Then we have Tn plus 1 equal to 2n plus Tn. Let's write this down here as well. We have Tn plus 1 equal to 2n plus Tn. You know this already that in the left hand side, we need Tn in order to solve this problem correctly using the substitution method. The reason is simple. We have been told to find the order of growth of Tn, not Tn plus 1. So, we must have Tn here in the left hand side. But how do we get Tn here? We can replace Tn plus 1 by Tn by subtracting n by 1. If we subtract n by 1, we will get Tn in the left hand side. But this is not enough. So, in the right hand side, we also need to subtract 1 from n here and here. So, we will get this equation Tn equal to 2 times n minus 1 plus T of n minus 1. We can rearrange these two terms. We can bring Tn minus 1 here and 2 times n minus 1 here as we have the addition symbol in between these two terms. Let's do the rearrangement now. Tn must be equal to Tn minus 1 plus 2 times n minus 1. This is the equation so obtained which we now need to solve using the substitution method. Let's apply the substitution method now. We know according to the substitution method, we can substitute Tn minus 1 by Tn minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2. This is because we can replace n by n minus 1 to obtain the value of Tn minus 1. In the left hand side, now we have Tn minus 1. In the right hand side, we will get T of n minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2. So, we can replace Tn minus 1 by Tn minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2. This is the equation so obtained after substitution. Here we have Tn equal to Tn minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2. This is what Tn minus 1 is. And the rest of the equation is obtained from the previous equation. We have plus 2n minus 1 here. That's why we are putting it here. Now we know this is new Tn in terms of Tn minus 2. Similarly, we can replace Tn minus 2 
or we can substitute tn minus 2 by tn minus 3 plus 2 times n minus 3. Just replace n by n minus 2, you will get the value of tn minus 2, which is tn minus 3 plus 2 times n minus 3. This is the equation so obtained. After substituting tn minus 2 by tn minus 3 plus 2 times n minus 3. Now we can see this is new tn in terms of tn minus 3. We can continue in this way up to let's say tn minus k. Now this is my assumption that tn minus k is the point where the base case is reached. This means n minus k must be equal to 1 and therefore we will get t1 which is equal to 10. So let us assume that we are going up to tn minus k here. We have obtained this equation and let me tell you how we have obtained this equation. It is simple. Here we can observe a pattern. If we have tn minus 3 here, then we have 2 times n minus 3 here. Then value 1 is reduced in the subsequent terms. We can observe we have 2n minus 3 here. Then we have 2 times n minus 2. Then we have 2 times n minus 1. The same pattern we can observe here as well. If we have n minus 3 here, then we must have n minus 3 here. Similarly, if we have n minus k here, then we must have n minus k here. If we have n minus 3 here, then we must have n minus 2 here. This means we are reducing 3 by 1. Here we need to reduce k by 1. And that's what we are doing here. We are replacing k by k minus 1. And this is what we are obtaining. In the same way, we can continue up to 2 times n minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 1. This is new tn in terms of tn minus k. We know n minus k is equal to 1. This is what we have assumed. Now we can find the value of k. k must be equal to n minus 1. We can replace k by n minus 1 everywhere in this equation. Here we will get t1 which is equal to 10. Let's replace this by t1. We know t1 is equal to 10. We will replace this t1 by 10 later. Now let's replace k by n minus 1. We will get 2 times 1. Here if we replace k by n minus 1, we will get n minus n plus 1, which is equal to 1. So we will get 2 times 1. Now what about this? We can replace k by n minus 1 here as well. We will get n minus 2. And n minus n minus 2 is equal to 2. So we will get 2 times 2 here. In this way, we can continue up to 2 times n minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 1. Now we know t1 is equal to 10. And we can take 2 common from the summation. So we will get 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 so on up to n minus 2 plus n minus 1. This is the sum of first n minus 1 natural numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on up to n minus 1. This is the sum of first n minus 1 natural numbers. And we know how to find the sum of n natural numbers already. The sum of first n natural numbers is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. If we replace n by n minus 1, we will get the sum of first n minus 1 natural numbers. So we will get n minus 1 times n divided by 2 as the result of n minus 1 natural numbers. This is what we have obtained. Now we have 2 in the denominator and 2 in the numerator. We can cancel these two terms. We will be left with n minus 1 times n. This is equivalent to n square minus n plus 10. We have obtained this polynomial n square minus n plus 10. Now we know n square is the dominating term. The rest of the terms are not dominating. They are extra terms and they do not have much significance for larger values of n. So clearly n square is the dominating term and hence tn must be equal to theta of n square. This means tn is asymptotically equal to n square. If we write theta of n square, then we can write big O of n square. 
and we can also write big omega of n square because if theta is satisfied then big o and big omega are also satisfied we can say tn is asymptotically equal to n square because we have eliminated the constants and lower order terms and we will be left with n square as the dominating term therefore we can say tn is asymptotically equal to n square and therefore option c is the correct option so in this way we can solve these type of problems although you might have observed in this problem that the recurrence relation was not given in the form that we are aware about the recurrence relation is given like this the base case and the recursive case is written separately sometimes in the questions the recurrence relation might be given like this so please be aware about this so with this we are done with the problem and we are done with this presentation okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one